Scary Mysteries Twisted Twos, Missing Mother and Daughter, and Carmen Chan. Tales of hauntings, murder, and scary mysteries. Every week, Twisted Twos dives into a pair of uniquely terrifying true stories that are worthy of a more in-depth look. For this week, we focus on two missing women from France and a 13-year-old who was abducted in Australia. Get ready for Scary Mysteries Twisted Twos. Number 1. Missing Mother and Daughter It's rare for a mother and daughter to go missing at the same time, but that's exactly what happened in the case of Marie and Alison Benitez from Perpignan, southwestern France. It was July 14, 2013 when people last saw 19-year-old Allison. She had just met up with her father Francisco, who was a chief warrant officer serving in the French Foreign Legion at the time. When people started asking for Allison, it was him who told family and friends that his wife and daughter had left for a trip to Toulouse and were not communicating since their cell phones were turned off. Curiously, he didn't inform his wife's family about this supposed vacation. Days after the 14th, no one could reach the two women, and so Allison's friends decided to report the two of them missing. By July 22nd, Francisco himself also reported that his wife and daughter had disappeared. During the investigation, police traced the last supposed whereabouts of the pair, but could not find evidence of them being in Toulouse at all. There was no credit trail, and they were not captured in any of the CCTV cameras on the Perpignan Railway either, which they had supposedly taken. Francisco explained to investigators that he and his wife were having marital problems. Police tried to trace calls to the women's phones, but it showed no calls had been made in a long time. Even more suspect, there was no movement in their bank accounts either. Despite establishing a preliminary inquiry on August 2nd, the search was fruitless. After the disappearance, the media found out another woman linked to Francisco had also mysteriously disappeared. Her name was Simone Alves, a 28-year-old Brazilian who went missing in 2004. Simone was Francisco's girlfriend without her realizing that he was married. Apparently, Francisco was leading a double life, and because of this, Simone's case was reopened. Weeks after the disappearance, Francisco shared a video of himself to French magazine Paris Match. In it, he asked for help in finding his wife and daughter, while also proclaiming his innocence. Then, by August 5th, he was found dead. He had killed himself in an apparent suicide by hanging inside the Perpignan barracks of the Foreign Legion. He did this after calling another mistress who was living in Barcelona at the time. Many believed he couldn't bear the suspicion around him, and most likely the guilt of killing his family and other mistress set him off to commit suicide. Police looked into the barracks in late 2013, since this was Francisco's workplace. Forensic analysis found traces of Allison's blood inside a freezer and a tumbler dryer as well. Apparently, Francisco was seen cleaning the freezer and dryer shortly after his daughter and wife disappeared. He is still considered by police as the main suspect in what they believe to be a double murder. They suspect Allison must have found out her father was having an affair and decided to tell her mother, hence they were most likely killed. Currently, aside from the tiny forensics, no trace of Allison or Marie has ever been found. Although it's believed they were killed, no conclusive evidence of them dying or still being alive exists. Number 2. Carmen Chan On April 13, 1991, 13-year-old Carmen Chan was inside her home in Temple Style, Australia when she was abducted. While her parents worked at their Chinese restaurant in Eltham, Carmen, the eldest, was put in charge of babysitting her two younger siblings. All three girls were watching a Marilyn Monroe documentary inside Carmen's bedroom. At around 9 p.m., the two younger girls went to the kitchen, but in the hallway they found a man wearing a ski mask and carrying a large knife. He then grabbed both girls by the hair, shoved them inside a cupboard in the bedroom, and barred the door closed with the bed. The two girls later told police the man called out and said, I won't hurt you to them. By the time they finally were able to push their way out, it was too late and Carmen was missing. Police were called and they traced the girl's scent. The dog moved past the family's vehicle outside which was spray painted with the words payback and 
more to come. But cops believe that this was a ruse and an attempt to steer the investigation. Then the dogs move further across the garden and tennis court, through a gate and out onto the street. It led them to a vacant lot about 300 meters away and after that, the scent disappeared. It was a year after the incident when a man from Edgar's Creek, Thomastown, was walking his dog and stumbled across what looked to be a human skull in a landfill. He alerted police and over the next 24 hours, a forensics team painstakingly excavated what remained of the body. They only found portions of the jaw, skull, and neck, but believed the victim to be of Asian descent and approximately 10 to 13 years old. After running DNA, it was finally confirmed that the remains belonged to Carmen. She had been shot in the head three times. Despite the heavy media coverage and thorough investigation, no one was ever arrested for the crime. Police, however, believe she was the victim of a serial rapist nicknamed by the media as Mr. Cruel. This person is said to be responsible for at least three to four and possibly up to a dozen attacks on Victorian children during the 80s and 90s. What's known about him is only pieced together from the victim's testimonies along with the FBI profile created by both Victoria Police and the FBI working together. According to the profile, this killer is brutal and he might have worked for the education system since his attacks were always on school holidays. It's unknown if he had a girlfriend or wife, but if he did, he most likely had sexual deviations such as requesting them to wear a schoolgirl uniform in order for him to gain arousal. Since he most often released his victims, except for Carmen, police suspect the girl may have seen his face by pulling off his mask. Hence, she had to be killed. Previous victims have told police they remember seeing a camera and tripod at the end of the bed where they were shackled and assaulted. It's likely the killer made homemade pornography tapes as trophies. There were also descriptions of his car and his home, but these were nondescript like beige carpets, white walls, and salmon-colored curtains. To the outside world, this perpetrator would be described as normal and even a caring individual. It would be hard for anyone that knows him to believe he was a violent criminal. Although the case has turned cold, more recently police announced that they are looking into new suspects and have formed a special task force dedicated to tracking this man down. The long-standing reward for information leading to the arrest of the killer was increased from $300,000 to $1 million, and today the case remains open. So there were two of the scariest and most mysterious stories around. The world can be a crazy place and Twisted 2's is sure to show you why. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe and check out some of our other videos we know you'll love. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.